lest you need a new reason to disdain <laughs> veganism. So the right-wing commentator Steven Crowder has just released a video where he apparently exposes that veganism is worse for the environment than eating animal products. So let's get into the video and let's see what he has to say. Veganism, this is something you don't hear a lot, uh -oh. is potentially much worse for the planet. No. Let me cycle mm. through this. Uh, omnivorous farming is, is actually a lot more sustainable than the vegan model. So right. globally, we have, I wanna make sure I get this right, 25 to 40 billion tons of topsoil are lost every year to erosion, mainly due to plowing, intense cropping. Yeah. Uh, in the UK, the topsoil depletion is so bad that the farmers think they may actually never be able to harvest that land at all, wow. again. Wow. Yep. So the way to combat this, the topsoil is just letting the land just letting it return to being grazed Let pasture be. for a period, and that res results in complete halting of the erosion, and it rebuilds the soil. So before I get into the actual science of what it is that Stephen is saying, I, I want to address a couple of things. Um, and the first thing that I want to address is that he actually cites an article from The Guardian, and the article that he cites is an opinion piece. And it seems slightly strange to me that Stephen, who is a right-wing commentator and who always accuses the liberal media of telling lies and not being trustworthy and spreading misinformation, it seems strange to me that he would then cite a news outlet that he criticizes as always been misleading as a primary source in the argument that he's making. That seems slightly strange to me. But also, interestingly, it almost feels like this whole video was premeditated. Like he wanted to make a video exposing veganism in his own way. And the way he did that is he typed in, why is veganism bad for the environment into Google? And then he chose the second result. And if you scroll down, you can actually see the other sources that he uses to make his argument. And in effect, Stephen's whole argument about topsoil erosion comes from an opinion piece in a news outlet that he obviously thinks spreads misinformation normally because it's the Guardian, which pretty much epitomized the liberal media. And then that's his basis for his argument, an opinion piece in an outlet that he doesn't trust anyway. So kind of discredits most of his argument to begin with, but let's look at some of the science. Topsoil erosion is a really big problem. But the thing is, nothing Stephen says actually proves that veganism is responsible or a plant-based diet is responsible for that topsoil erosion. In fact, he kind of does the opposite. I mean, that opinion piece that he cites from The Guardian is written by a farmer who does kill the animals that graze in the land, but the reason that her land is restored is because she's let it rewild. The fact that topsoil is now healthy and nutrient dense isn't because she kills the animals, it's because she's let it restore to how it should be, which is exactly what vegans want. We want the land to be restored so that we can allow it to rewild and become feral. We can have all these animals roaming again. We can restore the nutrients in the soil, allow trees to replenish and act as carbon sinks. That's exactly what we want to do. And so in effect, his primary source doesn't justify killing animals. It justifies doing what we as vegans want, which is letting farmland rewild, restore, and allowing natural biodiversity of wildlife and vegetation to replenish. Also, if we all went to a plant-based diet, a study from the University of Oxford said that globally, we could restore 75% of global agricultural land because we wouldn't need it anymore. We could actually reduce the amount of land that we needed by going vegan. And so in the UK, where 48% of all land is dedicated to animal agriculture, we could restore hundreds of thousands of hectares of land and allow that to reforest and rewild, which would allow the carbon in the soil to replenish, and it would allow the nutrients in the soil to replenish as well. And it's kind of a a win-win situation in that sense. But instead we get cited as something that disproves his point, but in a way that's manipulated to make it seem like veganism's the problem, when in effect what he's showing proves that veganism is actually the answer to the problem. Yeah. If people not read, they don't. They no, they read. absolutely they don't. don't. You answer no. your, I just wanted to nope. remain silent so you yep. could answer your own question. There. And so now let's take a look at some of the science behind what Stephen is saying and see if it supports his point of view. And so in the US, only 27% of crops that are grown there are fed directly to humans, whilst 67% of the crops grown in the US are fed directly to livestock animals. So straight away, we can see there's a complete disparity in land use, which means that we could probably guess that animal agriculture is the main culprit in topsoil erosion, as the majority of the soil that's destroyed is used for animal agriculture. There's a five-year study that came out from the University of Oxford. It looked at 40,000 farms in 119 countries and looked at the primary 40 foods that we consume that makes up 90% of our diet. It was published in the journal Nature and is considered as the most comprehensive analysis of farming and the environment ever conducted. And they said that 83% of global farmland is dedicated to animal agriculture, yet it only produces 18% of calories. So I think we can see straight away looking at this science, that it's probably animal agriculture that's the main culprit. The research also found that grass-fed beef, thought to be relatively low impact, was still responsible for much higher impacts 
than plant-based food. Furthermore, an international team of researchers from all across the world looked into the arguments in favor of grass-fed beef to see if they had any veracity and credibility when scrutinized against the science. They discovered that the potential of grazing ruminants to soil carbon sequestration is small, time-limited, reversible, and substantially outweighed by the greenhouse gas emissions they generate. Therefore, the ambitious claims made by advocates of grass-fed livestock about grazing as a significant mitigation opportunity are thus unfounded. They also stated that spread out across the globe, one gram of protein per person per day comes from solely grass-fed animals, as compared to 32 grams of protein per person per day coming from all other animal sources, including fish, and 49 grams of protein per person per day coming from plant sources. However, when it comes to land use, ruminants collectively use about a quarter of the Earth's usable surface, so even if exaggerated claims about carbon sequestration were true, it is simply not possible to carry and eating as much meat and dairy as trends indicate and obtain it through grass-fed systems alone. So we can quite clearly see that stacked against the science, Stephen's claims don't make any sense and his primary source to justify what it is that he's saying actually only proves that rewilding farmland is the best thing for the soil and best thing for the environment, which is exactly what we as vegans are advocating for. So scrutinized against the science, Stephen has absolutely no point and inadvertently has actually proved himself wrong through the sources that he has used. There is also plenty more research from incredibly credible scientific institutions that further proves that what Stephen is saying is completely bogus. And so I'll pop them up on the screen now, but I'll also include them in the description below. So please do read them. And remember that Stephen's source for proving what he is saying is an opinion piece published in an outlet that he continuously believes disseminates misinformation and liberal lies. However, the information that I'm presenting is unbiased, impartial scientific literature that's peer reviewed and published in some of those respect journals from all around the world. Now you decide which argument has more veracity. So another reason that veganism might be worse for the environment, people don't think about this, uh, it's often overlooked, the importation of foods. Yeah. The point is they want a very diet and it requires a lot of food like quinoa, mm -hmm. avocados, yeah. they'd be imported. <laughs> it's so bad now that countries like Mexico, Kenya, they've completely depleted their supply of wow. certain foods. Stephen's next argument presupposes that it's only vegans who are buying avocados and quinoa. However, we obviously know this is completely untrue. It's not 2% of the population causing all these problems, especially when the other 98% also buy the quinoa and avocados. No, and that no, 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 we need the avocados, please. By the way, that was just and this isn't an argument for producing animals to rear them and kill them to consume them. It's an argument for increasing the self-sufficiency of countries' own food production. So if we look at some actual science and we cite the paper published by Harvard Law School, they looked at using one third of the cropland that is currently used to feed livestock animals in the UK. And they discovered that we could feed nearly every single person in the UK their five portions of fruit and vegetables every day for a year using just one third of the cropland used to feed animals. And if you look at the US, if we designated all the cropland used to feed animals, but instead used that land to feed human edible crops, they could feed an extra 350 million people in the US. By doing this, we could very easily increase the self-sufficiency of countries, meaning we're less reliant on importing foods, and things like quinoa and avocados can be grown much closer to home. Say I live in the UK, and I can buy quinoa that's made in the UK. Pretty simple stuff, really. What, what do you think is better for the environment? Eating venison from a deer you bag yourself, or eating meat from your local yak farm, for all I know, or <laughs> fixing yourself $20 toast with avocados that were grown in Mexican tap water and tossed into trucks to t travel 2,500 miles. Yeah, yeah. Now this line of argument comes straight from Joe Rogan's bro science rule of thinking, and it doesn't add up if you look at the maths, because there's 320 million people or thereabouts who live in the US, and about 30 million deer who live in the US. So how long can this be a viable alternative for? You see, when we're looking at alternatives and solutions, we have to look at whether or not those solutions can be applied on a larger scale. Things like climate change, global warming, and food scarcity, increased droughts. We have to look at solutions that can actually feed billions of people. And sending everyone out of a high-powered rifle to go and shoot a deer quite clearly isn't a solution. And will in fact cause even more instability within ecosystems and within the environment. And that's why a plant-based agricultural system is the most viable and credible alternative. Because as the science is very succinctly proving, the only way that we're going to feed a growing population with finite land and increasingly finite resources is by reducing the amount of land that we need for agriculture. And the only way that we can do that is through a plant-based diet. A lot of vegans may not realize this. Do you know how it's 20, especially certain uh, grains like wheat. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's corn. I think we have a source. Mm -hmm. 
results in 25 times more sentient animals wow. being killed per kilogram of usable protein. Now this stat is actually very misleading and it creates a very clear bias because we're comparing usable protein, which makes it a false equivalence. In the same way that if we were comparing carbohydrates between different food sources, that would also be biased in favor of different food types and would be a false equivalence. And so the real way to see the damage done between different food types and compare them is by looking at the number of calories produced. If we look at this data, which shows the number of animals killed to produce 1 million calories, we can see very clearly that plant-based foods result in far less animals being killed in all stages of the production and process than animal-based foods do. Which means that if we actually care about animals killed during harvesting, we should still be plant-based because less animals are killed for plant-based foods. Furthermore, the argument that Crowder makes here is very myopic. It looks at it from just one very narrow point of view. But a grass-fed food system would require much more land being destroyed because grass-fed animals require more land. And the reason we factory farm is quite simply because we don't have the land to produce animals in big free-roaming pastures. And also, it's not economically viable either. And so if we think about increasing the number of grass-fed animals, we have to increase the number of habitats being destroyed. And if you clear natural vegetation and habitats, what you do is you decimate wildlife and you kill mammals and insects. And if we really cared about these animals, again, we'd be advocating for a switch to a plant-based diet, not only because plant-based foods result in less animals being killed in harvesting, but a plant-based food system, as I've already said before, means that we can free up 75% of global agricultural land, and that means we can rewild that land, allow the natural vegetation to come back and provide habitats, ecosystems, and homes for animals. And so again, this isn't an argument for not killing animals. It's the opposite. It's an argument for allowing land to replenish, rewild, and shifting to a plant-based food system. I mean, non-vegans seem to have this idea that vegans are completely unaware that animals sometimes die during crop production. Of course we're aware. It's a reality of life, but it doesn't justify purposefully raising animals, taking them to slaughterhouses, and cutting their throats. It doesn't justify that. All it justifies is that we need to look at technological advancements in plant-based agriculture as well. I mean, we're under no illusion that plant-based farming is perfect. Of course it isn't. But what we should be doing is challenging ourselves to improve the agricultural system. And we can do that through things like no-tilling, through reduced forms of devastation in plant-based agriculture. That could be looking at vertical farming. It could be looking at veganic, organic farming. There are so many solutions and raising, artificially breeding, inseminating, mutilating, exploiting and killing animals is not one of them. And I want to state here that if we're advocating for a shift to an entirely grass-fed food system, what we're actually doing is advocating that the majority of people in the world be eating plant-based anyway. There's simply not enough land to go around to meet the demand for animal products through grass-fed animals. And because there wouldn't be enough supply to meet the demand, that means the price of these products would skyrocket which means that only people who are affluent would be able to afford them anyway. Which might work for Crowder, I'm sure he could afford to buy these grass-fed animals, but for the average person, no. For the average person would be consuming plant-based anyway because there wouldn't be enough supply to meet the demand, meaning it'd be out of reach for the majority of people. So if we're advocating for a grass-fed food system, we're advocating for the majority of people to be plant-based anyway. The reason a lot of informa uh, misinformation regarding dietary cholesterol and the saturated fat was because of the vegetarian lobby. And their agenda above truth and they're doing the same thing now, uh, is instead of, what really bothers me is when they say that Republicans are anti-science. And now at this point, Crowder really starts spiraling and in my eyes, he completely loses all credibility, even for the flimsy arguments he's been making thus far. He says there's a vegetarian lobby. Well, where is this vegetarian lobby? Please provide some evidence. I mean, look at the actual video in its entirety. What evidence does Stephen provide? How much science is he citing in the description? Are there any citations for the science he's citing? Of course not, because he's not actually citing any credible science. He's making speculation, he's referring to opinion pieces, and at the end here, he's just completely making things up. A vegetarian lobby. Can we please provide some evidence for that? And now if we actually look at the reality of what's going on, in the EU, a fifth of the entire European Union budget is given to livestock farmers. Where's the vegetarian lobby in that equation? I mean, how much money has been siphoned to kale farmers, do you think? probably not 26 billion euros. If we look at the US, 63% of tax subsidies are given to animal farmers and people involved in the production of livestock animals, which means that we can see there's heavily a bias on one side and it's not to plant farming. And so for a vegetarian lobby that's so omnipotent and so powerful that it can even get the tallow removed from McDonald's fryers. So for example, oh, wow. McDonald's, they used to use tallow for fries after lobbying from vegetarians to the USDA. They switched to hydrogenated vegetable oils. What does that even prove? Why would they allow so much money to be given 
to animal agriculture, especially when animal agriculture is only propped up by tax subsidies. The only reason we can afford these products and the only reason that most farmers can afford to farm is because of tax subsidies. So why isn't the vegetarian lobby intervening? Makes you think, doesn't it? Also, this point at the end is, is quite interesting because as an outspoken conservative, both fiscally and socially, crowd is against taxation. But what happens in animal agriculture is distinctly anti-conservative, it's distinctly anti-free market, and it's pro-state interference through taxation. In fact, the US government last year bailed the dairy industry out by $1 billion because the dairy industry was losing money because consumer choices were changing. But the whole crux of the free market is that consumer choice should drive the economy. But here we have in the US where consumer choices are changing, which should be allowed through the free market. But instead of allowing that change to dissipate throughout the industry and for the industry to make changes accordingly, the US government stepped in and gave taxpayers money to the industry to bail them out, which is something that Crowder himself should be against. So potentially, Maybe in the future, Crowder should become a vegan because by being a vegan, you can take a stance against heavy taxation. And so I actually agree with Stephen here when it comes to taxation in the sense of, let's take these tax subsidies away from animal farmers. Let's see what happens then. Well, they'd crumble. The price would be too high for them to be able to continue and be too high for people to be able to afford the products. The only way animal agriculture operates and works is through a high system of taxation, which Stephen Crowder as a conservative actually opposes. So if we look at, again, this video in its entirety, the arguments that Stephen makes juxtapose his conservative values and he's citing opinion pieces from media outlets that juxtapose his opinions as well. Doesn't seem like he has much leg to stand on. And his echo chamber in the background, what are they about? Veganism, this is something you don't hear a lot, uh -oh. is potentially much worse for the planet. <gasps> no. Let me cycle mm. through this. Topsoil erosion. Yeah. Wow. Again. Wow. Yep. Does everyone understand where I'm going with this? Yes. yes. Just agreeing with everything he says, it creates a sense of false validation. It's, it's annoying to watch Crowder's videos because in the background, all you can hear is people saying, yeah, and wow, and agreeing with every point that he makes, which is kind of worrying because if you're a gullible viewer and you're looking for validation and you hear people saying yeah to everything he says, then in your mind, it creates a sense that what he's saying is true. It's not. Look at the science. Look at my citations in the description. Compare it to what Crowder has in his video and make up your own mind. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you'd like me to make more commentary videos, then please let me know down below in the description. And uh, yeah, look at the science, look at the objectivity. Don't believe what's put in a video. Don't even believe what I've said. Go and look at the science yourself and make your own opinion. Don't listen to the yes and the wows in the background of his video. Look at it yourself. Make your own opinion, make your own judgment and uh, listen to objectivity and truth. Thank you so much for watching this video and uh, I'll see you in the next one.